Good morning, traders. It is 7.26 in the morning. Maybe my gain is a little too high there. Is that any better? Do, do, do. Or is it still too high? Ooh. Maybe that's a little better. Okay. Yeah, I think that's... I think that's better. All right. Um, maybe not. Wow. I'm looking at that, and it is way... Hi. Okay. Real quick. Yesterday we got was kind of a day before State of the Union. Yesterday we had the Fed meeting. It was uh, Janet Yellen's last day. Um, I want to bring up the portal real quick. If you so. If you're new and watching us for the first time, or if you are um, with us again, I want you to take a quick look at this. I'm gonna go over this one more time. Um, you know, you can you can resize these windows on the portal. Now this is just cool. No, I haven't seen anybody else has this kind of setup. Um, the guys that Forex lines have made something really pretty, pretty awesome. Um, you know, if you log in, you know, the past sessions are all in here. Gosh, that really puts it into perspective how, how often we've done these. Um, we also have the education library, which, yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I keep saying I have to add things to it, but man. And then the signals are where, um, the uh, trade ideas are, are are going in. So when I put those in there as we're talking, you know, they'll dump right into this uh, uh, page right here, all right? Um, so you can have, you know, a number of these guys open. It's like your own little virtual desktop. And if you have any questions, you can throw them in there. Um, And do do do. There we go. Well, that's loud. All right. Anyways, let's go ahead and get on with our. It is weird seeing myself there. I think I'm wearing the same tie, actually. I am wearing the same tie. Got rid of the headset. Well, I still have the headset. I just connected a, a mic instead. Um. Anyways, let's go ahead and take a walk through. Uh, what we have going on um, yesterday we were looking at a short on the uh, on gold a short on the euro the New Zealand dollar and then going along on uh, the dollar yen so if we look at if we look at the gold trade for yesterday uh, we wanted to go short at 1341 and that is working out fine so far we're at 1341 31 is where we wanted to be short at right here that was working out fine and our our stop area was around 1346 it worked out nicely uh we are just kind of milling around here um i think on monday or tuesday i was talking about price kind of ping-ponging in with this triangle uh there is is definite showing weakness here um on on gold as far as this level is concerned we're looking at an area for it to cross below. We've got a pretty large confluence area here. We have a short term. Um, actually, we just had news come out too. We had big news actually. Shame on me. So jobless claims came out. Uh, ah, wow, better than expected. Uh, previous was 233. The consensus was 238, and it was actually 230. So. There you go on that. Continuing job, jobless claims are worse than expected. Uh, 1.953 million versus the previous of 1.937. And the consensus was going to be 1.928. So, you know, nothing overly drastic. We'll see how these markets respond to it. But so our gold short is still fine. Um, 
we really want to see a break of of not of the 1337.19 area. We also want to get a break of this of this uh, uh, kind of rough trend line, but there we go, and um, and this angle. So there is a little uh, area of support here, but if that fails, we should expect to see some um, you know responsive uh, selling maybe. If you, but if we look at this bar right, I wonder why my oscillators are not loading there. Hmm. Just reload the page. There we go. If we take a look at these, um, uh, this tail here, this is all buying support right here. Uh, uh, it's good to see that um, we're kind of in the mid of all that of that uh, activity. Uh, that was near the uh, Fed session yesterday. Uh, so we'd like to break down below that. Bond bond yields are up a lot. Um, they've been kind of in a 40-year bull market. <laughs> and, um, and of course, our equity markets in the States are really accelerated. Uh, we'll come back to gold. There may be a short opportunity down here. In fact, why not just set it in there? We want to have, I want to go short. Um, I don't know why it readjusts that so often. It's a little frustrating, but we are below that angle. That's fine. So the actually this makes it a little, I thought that looked funny when I looked at it early, earlier before I reloaded the page, but um, this angle, it's really steep. So having it act as a supportive angle is a little different, but um, so, Hold short at um, all right so I, I put up a if you're still holding the short at 1341, um, I didn't put this in there, but you, you, you could bring it down into break even or into profit a little bit if you wanted to. Otherwise, there's another short opportunity of when we have a break and a hold of the 1336 price level. So we wanna get below this trend line, below this angle, or below this, uh, this uh, resistance band. And then we, uh, you know, we'll wanna hold below that because this angle shouldn't hold then. You know, we really don't have a lot of support on the way down. All right, maybe the midway, but otherwise the next supportive angle is down here. So just keep an eye eye on that. Additionally, we do have a, you know, the head, head and shoulder set up from earlier worked out nice. But on a longer look, I want to bring it down to the eight hour. Yeah. Watch for this. The setup may happen. Okay, now we're looking at. Let's take a look at uh, the euro dollar. No, no, sorry, our other trade. Yeah, euro. Euro. We had. Um, unit farm labor costs better than expected. Non-farm productivity worse than expected by me. Okay. So the euro we want it to be short at. 124 um 124.59 we'll put that a lot at 730 131 yeah 731 what do we say one 2459. Yeah, because we had our stop all the way at 74. Um, what did we say? At 74. Oh gosh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so, so if we had a short at the uh, uh, 2459 zone, 
Um, we had a we have a really nice run that came down. Um, it's still within that value area, and you know this also. Again, I really do not like these patterns, but dang it if I keep repeating this same thing every day is that they seem to show up a lot and when I say I don't like them they seem to pan out but on our euro trade if we look at this you know we're we've got these all-time well not all-time highs but our, our multi-year high is up here around the 125 zone and we're still sitting below the uh, 124.75 value area uh, we are looking really top heavy over here you know if we look at this on the hourly we're you know we're having a series of lower highs as we're going and we're getting rejection right there so that hold of that price is still good um Probably say 1.243. So we still have, um, really, we have strong bias for the downside on this pair. Uh, we'll, we'll come back to it though here. Uh, New Zealand dollar has been showing a lot of weakness lately. That's that's great. We have definitely have these multiple tops here, right at this 50 retracement on our in our in our GAN square of 144. Um, we went short at 74.08, which is right there. That's that's really working out nicely. Um, we've had some really good push downs. We're above this angle, and we haven't really tested higher. It hasn't. It's tried to, but but you know what we can expect is a return to this angle with some maybe a little bit of support and then you know we're looking to drop below it uh uh the again we'll we'll look at these on longer time frames as we come back to them but but this short is still working out it is still active um we're holding the short from 0 0.7408 you can add add up at a break of the 0.7330 area, oops. And the dollar yen, uh, that one's been working out nicely. Uh, not on this chart, but on this chart. Five minute, why do I have a five minute up? But I drew this <laughs> fairly large head and shoulders pattern on on the on the weekly you know what maybe it'll look cleaner over here um wait what did i cool all right i didn't know i did that but on the weekly chart or on the daily actually i think i found it on the weekly yeah on the weekly chart we have a nice little setup happening here on the weekly chart um, with uh, with the uh, dollar the dollar yen, uh, we could definitely see a inverse head and shoulders pattern forming here. If that's the case, any entry down here is perfect. That's a surefire sign for a rise up to test this angle and this trend line rather. Um, you know, even on a longer frame here on this weekly you know we we are looking to ride this angle right here i know this looks a little messy um, but we really want to ride this angle up and and we have definitely bottomed on on this on this chart if we look at uh you know we we if we look at um the uh uh Had to write something to somebody very quick. If we, um, so if we're looking at uh, uh, this kind of activity, we have on the weekly. So these two peaks here, we have these um, higher lows, or rather, yeah, higher lows, 
and then we have lower lows in the oscillator. That is awesome. All right, we have higher lows in our price level, but we have lower lows on the oscillator in these in these peaks and valleys. All right, that is called hidden divergence. That is hidden bullish divergence. Any divergence that you see on a longer time frame chart is always going to be more stronger, more relevant, and have a higher probability of of uh, of showing of 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 showing a a. Uh, I should say that it's rare. It's rare to have very obvious divergences show up on long term charts like like weeklies and monthlies. But when they do show up, they have a very high probability of panning out. So you know we're looking forward. Uh, a period of months here on a move to reverse to the upside okay we're looking at and if we even look at this pattern you know in the long term view this is a this is a like a like a pennant flag you know whatever this is a bullish pattern here this entire price move um, and this area right here is extremely bullish we have a double bottom so far if we even clear that out a little bit we, we, are, we are showing a double bottom, almost a tweezer bottom so far on our weekly chart. This is a very bullish setup. You know, where did we stop though? We stopped right in the, uh, uh, the middle of this. So um, if we were to put a Fibonacci, I'm gonna hide this for a second. So our 50% retracement is right there, okay? Right on that 109, uh, 835 zone. When we break above that, that's 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 some, that's going to be a mover. We're we're going to get a move, a nice move. So pay attention to that. Um, again, I don't use Fibonacci retracements a lot because I think it's dangerous to use them on time frames under a daily. Uh, ideally, you would only use them on, on weekly charts, um, weekly and monthly charts. But if I go back in on the daily, look at that. That is a beautiful rounded bottom we've got going. We are coming off of very extended oversold conditions on our on our daily. This is a very nice uh, setup. We do have a lot of sell pressure up here still, but but that's good. If we can continue pushing up, then a lot of these people who are short are going to have to cover those shorts and, and buy back in and go long. So um, just yeah, we could even have an inverse head and shoulders forming as we as we move up. <laughs> that would be a kind of a cool move. Um, so just be be careful of 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 looking to go short around these areas. We do have some bullish retracement setup happening in the in the dollar yen. So again. You know, we are still looking to stay long, holding long above 109. Um, and really, we could, um, we'll get back to that. Okay, let's go back, look at everything again, and looking at gold. Looking at gold on the daily. Let's look at gold on the weekly quick. On the weekly, where are we at? We are in extended conditions on the, um, um, and in fact, we have, we have what you could probably say is uh, we have a higher high, higher highs in price, okay? But we have lower highs in our oscillator. That's regular bearish divergence. That's, that's showing up on the weekly. Again, that's a strong sign of some trend uh, changing in direction. Uh, keep your eye on that but the short of holding up there is, is perfectly fine it's still good um, as we're continuing to we're looking back now on the daily as we're continuing to fail to make any higher highs and we are actually printing off some lower lows here on the daily we have good bias for continued downwards movement um, there is a lot of exhaustion happening with the buyers around here. Um, you know, we could they could want to push this up more, um, but again, 
I already have a short idea in there uh, for the breakdown and, and, and sitting below here, so that's still open. The Euro dollar, it's really wanting to try and push higher here. Um, you know, we've got that news already came out 8:45. Um, we've got uh, uh, PMI, Addy Gas. Uh, so the short, it's still good here. I mean, uh, um, I'm not really looking at a lot of long opportunities in here. This is showing some signs of exhaustion and weakness. If we look at the euro on the weekly, I mean, it is it is really, really, really extended. Um, really, out of all the pairs we're probably looking at, the euro is probably the most extended and overbought territory, um, even more so than the New Zealand dollar. Look at that on the weekly. That's that's really bearish. Uh, even the Aussie dollar, ooh, yeah, that's a flush. <laughs> that's a that's a really healthy uh, chart. We were talking about this actually. I remember I put up an idea on this for us last week, um, based on GAN cycles on January twenty seventh. Yeah, so four days ago right 27th wait gotta look at that again uh yeah back on saturday so um not quite a week ago but yeah it was last week technically so on the 27th short idea based on these really accelerated levels seven day cycles seven week cycles very bearish for um, or bullish, depending on the move. Gan called seven-day moves like that, especially seven-week moves, 49-day cycles or seven-week cycles. He called those death zones. Those those are very vi those cause very violent ends to moves um, and trends. So so we definitely see that playing out on on the Aussie dollar. Uh, that is a <laughs> that's a that's a big big bear sign big down yeah this is totally broken trend trend here um, in fact I think shorted any retracement towards um, the point eight oh three or a break and hold below the uh, point eighty all right those are gonna be Good zones. This is this is definitely an exhausted move. It is it is overly uh, extended. Um, yeah, it's 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 way up there. I look at the yeah. In fact, a little pullback back to the eight hundred three is going to be fine. Actually, we we are a little moving a little too fast for this right now. Looking at the eight hour chart. Yeah, we're, we're very extended. Um, so this move is good. It's going to continue this direction, but we should expect some type of retracement because we are way farther down. Um, we've moved too fast in price versus in time. So uh, we like to see things move in equilibrium, and that's where this 45-degree angle comes in. Um, so anyways, going back to the New Zealand dollar, on the weekly, it's very overextended here. Right here, this is very extended. And even on the even on this pair too, we have a series of higher highs. Um, uh, what am I saying? Yeah, we, we have lower highs in in our um, ugh. what am I saying? Lower highs. And we have, uh, yeah, higher highs. So, yeah, we're looking at uh, hidden bearish divergence. Good setups on the weeklies. Man, I'm going to have to write all of these ones down because these are great setups. See, it's nice. I tell you what I like about... Um, doing the educational component of market stuff because that's really what my passion is. It's not all about the money. It For me, it's like uh, I have a huge 
like I, I used to be a, a musician. I went to school for music. And, um, you know, when I didn't do that anymore, the markets, for whatever reason, have really replaced that passion. I have the same amount of passion for it. So it's because it's not like if you're in music or if you're an artist of any sort, you know, you don't you don't do it because you are expecting to make a living from it. It's just something that you love to do. It's a passion. And that's how I feel about about the markets is I love the structure of it. I love the theory behind it. Um, so I'm just a really big nerd. It just so happens that I, I, uh, you can make money doing this, but I, I love going over these things because, um, I can go over it live. I'd be doing this by myself anyways. So it's, you know, it's, it's awesome that I can do it with, with other folks and they can see, they can see, you know, hopefully you guys can take something from what I'm talking about and apply it to your own trading. But, uh, you know, again, we have uh, hidden bearish divergence on here, which is fantastic. You know, so we're really accelerated. Stopped right at that 50 uh, Fibonacci retracement in our GAN square. That is gorgeous setup. Um, you know, we so so because we're so accelerated in our weekly that that New Zealand short is it should play out for quite a long time. Now, looking <coughs> excuse me, looking at it on the daily. And you know what's really great about weekly charts when like when you catch things right at those over those those overextended conditions what's so great about those moves is that then you can have a long-term bias on the direction of something and so we're going to have a lot of opportunities to get back in and add to these shorts or to 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 find re-entries or to tranche in or or pyramid in however you want to call it we're going to have a lot of those opportunities um looking at the the dollar, we already have a trade set in for that one. Um, and actually, we should get a nice, we were looking at uh, holding long above 109, yes, and we should be looking to add uh, a couple re-entries on the, here, um, we could be um, at 1.3, or sorry, 130. Oh God, 109.3, um, 109.2, yeah, and yeah, those are good areas to add to the longs. Yep, yep, we're just looking at these, yes, see there's... What's happening with the dollar yen is that so many people have been been short this for so long that um, what's so healthy about the move is that we have re-entered our we have re-entered this square and this zone so we've broken back into it and we're we're still holding above and we're we're near this 45 so we had a false break below. Um, you know, this is great re-entry area. Um, I mean, we have a very good bias for uh, long momentum here. Again, the moon phases as well should play a role in this. If we take a peek at it, bring it down to the hourly. Um, again, yesterday was that super blue blood moon. It was a full moon. It was a total lunar eclipse. That means if we're near market bottoms, then we have a high probability of prices reversing that downtrend and moving up. And so here we were with that full moon and those market bottoms and moved up. And again, at new moons, you have a strong probability of prices going down for a two week period. All right. Cool. So we should have a, we should have a fairly decent bias for moving, moving up here and continuing to move up and seeing strength in the buyers uh, as, as we move higher. And then seeing the higher we go here, especially when we crack the uh, uh, 110 area, um, we should expect to see a lot of uh, capitulation in, in the bearish sentiment. But still, we're holding here fairly well. It's good. Um, you know, tomorrow, going into tomorrow, we I mean, we may see some lower prices in all these, trying to test one more time to push it lower, but um, um, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. But for right now, those setups are working nicely. Uh, that Aussie dollar... Um, re 
Actually, there's another area. Uh, probably we'll look at 0 0.804. Eight eight oh five rather. Okay, cool. All right, the pound dollar. Looking at that, um, you know, for whatever reason, it's showing a lot of resilience. Uh, but it's gosh, it's barely holding on there. We are at this. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. Yeah, we're holding above this angle, but man, we have not wanted to test it. We got stopped at this uh, uh, fib retracement right there. If you look at the the daily, it is also very extended. Yeah, the 0.25 retracement we're we're stuck at. Uh, here's the Brexit flush that happened in uh, June of 2016, and I think it's important to do a fib line on this level because we are there's our there's our low. Yeah, so we we pretty much halted for a moment at the uh, the uh, uh, 78 retracement. Okay, um, we've had a pretty nice straight up move, and let's just take a quick peek. Let me uh, get rid of this. Keep those fib levels on here. Those are important. A lot of resistance right there um and actually what do we got for resistance right here yeah same same issue going on on this scan square yep okay uh looking at these levels they're pretty elevated there's going to be a good short opportunity if we can get below um the open of of this daily bar. So I'm um, looking at 1.4182. And then obviously we're gonna be looking for longs of a break and hold above. We can put that in there too. All right. Um, Again, we are we are looking at um, these are the highest highs we've seen since um, June of 2016. So so we're coming off of some very large yearly lows on the daily. We are on the on the RSI. We're actually in support of buying on the composite index, but on the RSI, we're extended. Let's bring it to the weekly. What are we looking at? Ooh, yeah, the weekly is. Let's look at that candlestick. A looking kind of berry looking kind of bearish there we've had one two three four five six seven seven up weeks that's a bad sign that is that is the weekly chart version pound version of the aussie chart we're just lagging a little bit. So we have a lot of bias for trend direction changes. Notice how volume goes up on these areas. We're, you know, this is actually really great that we're getting a hold of these. Sometimes as traders, when we're when we're trading on particular time frames that we're used to, I am very guilty of this. I sometimes often get tunnel vision with my hourly, four hour, eight hour time frames that I forget to take a peek at these weekly charts. And um, I used to be so good at looking at weekly charts at the uh, at the end of Friday trading in the afternoon. I would stop trading and I'd look at my weekly charts. I, I, I haven't done that very much. So, you know, your trader here is human just like you. <laughs> uh, we all make mistakes and I've given out bad calls, but I've given out some good ones too. So, um, but, but getting a chance to look at these weekly highs as we uh, uh, are... are seeing the very top of these moves is really great um yeah this is this is a cool setup on a lot of these the euro pound let's look at this one um well i do not need that anymore oh my gosh i put those all individually didn't i Oof. 
Remember that thing we talked about? So the euro pound, um, you know, we, I mean, it's, that's been a flat market. We don't need those anymore. Bring it down the daily. We had one trade on that, I thought, the euro pound we were looking at a while ago. Maybe not. Um, on the daily, it looks like we're finding support on that angle. But, man, we are so neutral. Not a lot of great. Okay, so, hey, that worked out nice, didn't it? Cool. All right. Uh, we want... Gosh, I know we had a trade on this open sometime this week. Um, the pound, the euro, the euro pound. Huh, I guess not. All right. Well, we may have an inverse head and shoulders happening here, but, um, you know, our, our, our good short opportunity is going to be at the 873. Otherwise... We, you know we're gonna want to go long above the high here um, we got so we got a couple areas what was that we're saying eight eighty seven sixty six Uh, we want to be below that, so we want to be at uh, 87.26. Cool. All right. We'll come back and take a peek at these real quick. Um, but let's take a look at cryptos. Oh, man, cryptocurrencies. Ooh, that's healthy. Oh, man. Pfft. Hold on. I got I to gotta take a screenshot of this. Share it with my... Bam, rejected lower right right at that now this is this is the stuff that this is why I love Gans approach and his idea of angles um, is that you can see how price close open and stops right on those angles um, you know we we may have lower prices coming still but man it is nice to see volume pouring in there um, I want to look at the hourly here uh, okay actually let's take a step back it's Bitcoin so when we're looking at bitcoin we have had you know including this bar here we've had a one two three four five six coming into a seven week downtrend now we have to look at kind of everything that is that is showing us these seven week move these 49 day moves seven series moves is um also take a look at this on the composite index on the weekly we are so in extended oversold conditions um, that this is the second lowest value that we've ever had on on bitcoin so what this is telling me is that we are in a strong supportive buying area that the selling pressure um, is going to be culminating here soon it may even want to push it down to the 7500 uh, 6500 area but we are very near the end of this move. We are so extended down. We're super, super overextended. Even on the daily, we actually have uh, on our daily, oops, is that right? Is that adjust as I'm looking? No, it doesn't. What do we have going on here on our daily? Regular, <clears throat> sorry, Blech. we have um, these higher lows in our oscillator, and we have, what do we have here? Lower lows in price. What is that telling me? That's regular bullish divergence, all right? That is, that is saying that this move is near its end, that this... That we've actually 
Uh, we've actually entered into some false movement for a while and that we should expect to see a reversal in these price moves. This, for, this GAN square, this, this angle here, uh, we're looking at this on the daily. So this angle, this represents uh, the, the open 45 degree angle from the open of the initial swing. Okay, remember we were talking about these, the, the, the three primary trends in, in markets according to Dow theory is that we've got a accumulation phase, public participation, and then we've got, um, we've got uh, uh, distribution. Basically, we've got a bull phase, uh, irrational exuberance, as Alan Greenspan would call it, and then we have, um, that's that phase, and then we have distribution. So, again, looking at this, we have, this is all accumulation, all right? This is where people got in early. This is where the, the, uh, the, the pro traders, the funds, the institutions, the people who know what they're doing have got in. And then right here is where the public participates. This is right when you start seeing things on the news. This is when people on Fox Business and Bloomberg and CNBC, people who are saying that Bitcoin's a fad, are now saying, that thing's going to go on forever. This is when I started hearing um, the folks at the... I'm in a small town, so... Uh, one of the one of the checkers at our at our one grocery store uh, asked about Cardano. Didn't even ask me about Bitcoin, but asked me about Cardano. That's when when you start to hear things, and I started getting messages on Facebook from friends and family about getting into Bitcoin. And uh, that when you start to hear those things, then you know public participation is not only here, but it's about to end. Because shortly after that is when we saw the flush, and that is where. Uh, you have your distribution phase. And so we're in that. And what happens after distribution? More accumulation. And that is that is definitely what we've been experiencing here. We've been experiencing a lot of uh, uh, accumulation. Um, so on the daily, super extended. Looking at the hourly, um, ba -dump, ba -dump. same issue. Um, we're just looking at a lot of divergences and over oversold conditions. Looking at the volume here, as we're getting as we're going lower, volume is increasing. That's a good sign. So we're experiencing the highest volume that we've seen on this hourly chart since all the way back towards. Uh, actually since the 21st. So, um, you know, we're seeing that volume spike here. That's good. That's healthy. We want to see that. We want to see rejection off this zone. We want to see buying happen. Um, I can already see a little bit of a bias for a little inverse heads and shoulder action here. I did say shoulder action. Yeah, I did. Going into here. Probably want to face a little touch back over here before that. I'm going to keep that there. I want to see if that works out. All right. So essentially what's happened is we are back into equilibrium. When prices revert back to their 45, that means we are back into an equal zone of trading where, where time, price, and momentum have finally come together. Because when things extend like they did on this line, we can see this in Ethereum, on Ethereum's chart. Um, remember, this is the 45 degree line, and this line right here, this is the, this is the, um, um, uh, da, 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 da. this is the two by one line. So what this line means is that when price is trading on this angle, on this line, when it's trading on it or above it, it means that it is moving as twice as fast in in its price move as it is in time. So there's a divergence in time and price when that happens. And so what happens is the higher you go, the farther you, on these steep rises, the higher you go and the farther you get from your 45, the more violent the snapback is because price wants to come back down to these 45s. Uh, price likes to trade above it a little, below it a little, above it a little, below it a little, 
or, or if it's in a downtrend, it likes to do that. Um, but price does not like to trade in accelerated moves away from the 45. It, it gets, it moves way ahead of itself. And so, you know, you'll always see these snapbacks, all right? These are like miniature parabolic moves. And, and so when you know you're getting a, a large percentage of a distance away from the 45, prices will snap back. So that happened on Ethereum. That has happened, well, I don't have Litecoins on there anymore, but um, that has happened on Bitcoin as well. Bitcoin was, not only was it trading above its 45, but it was trading way, way, way above its two by one line here. I mean, we just, this is the definition of a parabolic move. Um, and, and, and that's that's what happened. Um, anyways, really, I mean, I've had, yeah, I mean, these, these uh, anywhere behind ATH. Okay, so I mean, really, the uh, cryptos are not going anywhere, and there's really not a whole lot to talk about them right now because um, you know we're just we're just kind of waiting. I would love to see some breakdown below of the nine thousand area. Actually, I would love to see it go down to the seventy five hundred value area. I'd like it to shake out the last of those weak hands and get a lot of those buyers left. There's a whole lot of money sitting on the side to get into Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. And and really when I talk about when I talk about cryptocurrencies, I'm not talking or when I'm talking about Bitcoin, I mean really the whole cryptocurrency sector because Bitcoin is a crappy cryptocurrency. It's a dumb coin. It is a horrible blockchain um, until they do something with it because it is slow. It's ponderous. It's expensive. Its utility is crap. Uh, the transaction fees. I mean, I mean, they really need to upgrade this thing. But but what Bitcoin does really well is it does really good at being Bitcoin because right now Bitcoin is the it is the representative of the entire cryptocurrency sphere. Its strength and weakness represents the entire sector. It's like the SPY, or, or it's like the ETF of the, uh, uh, it's like the index fund of, of the, this entire asset class. So Bitcoin is, is the representative of the entire crypto sphere and its weakness and strength uh, it mirrors everywhere else in this entire asset class. So we're sitting at these these uh, uh, flushed levels, you know, right here at the beginning of February 1st, uh, where January is typically kind of a yucky month for Bitcoin in general. Um, and so we've ended that. We're at the, you know, we have a new moon, which is great, uh, a full moon. So anything at this, these downtrends show a high uh, uh, probability of moving up. And um, we've had volume increasing the lower we get. <clears throat> if we look at the daily, we see these uh, volume bars slowly creeping up a little bit, but still below our highs back in December. Um, so we're going to see increased participation, hopefully, uh, as we go. But but really, a break below the 7,500 area should not surprise. Or break below towards 7,500 should not shock anybody uh, we should expect to see that kind of a move actually but we are definitely coming to a head as far as um as far as our our continued down down movement um hopefully anyways um it is quarter after eight let's just double check our currency trades here and see what's going on da -dun, da -dun. See the euro showing weakness, still coming down off those highs. New Zealand dollar, um, not want, trying to push higher. Uh, let's see, we've got, ooh, we probably have a good entry showing on the um, on uh, the dollar yen here pretty soon. Uh, let's look at it from this chart. Yep, nice little break there, but that should be bought up uh, fairly soon. Um, 
you're going to catch a lot of people trying to um, say that this broke, but uh, really, it, uh, really great bias for long position for a while in, in the dollar yen. Um, even the DXY is flattening out and showing signs of consolidation and accumulation before it wants to rise up again. Looking at all of our equities. Now, if you remember, I wrote... somewhere uh, well at least on the 23rd I thought it was like on the 16th I, I believe I was writing about um, um, the uh, reversal of all the markets happening here soon because of all these time cycles um, so if we look at the Dow is continuing its move down. The NQ is continuing its move down. Actually, that's very heads and shouldery. This thing's going to flush hard. And the uh, uh, ES, S&P 500, these are all the futures of the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow. All these are, are showing extreme uh, bearish signals because they are stupidly overextended. I mean, I know I'm getting off track here a little bit, We're not talking about Forex, but uh, they're... <laughs> This is parabolic of parabolic. Again, a parabolic move means that you have an uptrend, you know, in a in a in a fairly decent slope, and and then you have the angle increases as you're moving. So we 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 increase the angle here, and then we increase the angle. <laughs> okay, and then we increased the angle. I mean. There's a lot of definitions of what a parabolic move is, but to me, it's the the multiple uptrends and an uptrend that that continually gets steeper and steeper, and eventually, it's this is like physics, really. You 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 can't keep going this high, and and parabolic moves always, always, always. This is probably the only constant in the market besides prices go down and up. Is that parabolic moves? Their their corrective move is 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 as violent as the move it uh, up or down that that happened so we should expect to see a a hopefully a quick flush i mean we should see a 10 percent corrective move in equity markets that'd be fantastic because this is just dumb right, this is this is dumb and not healthy <laughs> so uh yeah we should we should see that happening here but again looking at the trades gold um you know, gold is falling down. The euros try, uh, you know, making lower lows. New Zealand dollar is coming down again. Dollar yen's getting bought back up. The Aussie dollar is finding support. But I mean, if it breaks eight thousand, we should, you know, we have that short idea on there. Pound dollar, um, yeah, finally it's 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 showing some correction. And then the the euro pound. Um, that's always a hard one to trade if you don't. Uh, but but I tell you, the euro pound seems to respond to structure more than anything else. Um, but trying to figure out if the euro is stronger than the pound, <laughs> it's always a kind of a crapshoot. You 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 don't have a lot of because we trade mostly the dollar pairs. Uh, you know we don't have a lot of um, bias to to look at there. The euro versus the Aussie dollar, obviously huge 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 move, huge. Um, anyways, okay, so 8, 8.20 in the morning, we've got some trades up in front of us. Uh, we should really expect to see um, um, some nice moves in these markets. And we've got, a, actually, we've got a whole bunch of trades. I said that we would, we'd probably have a lot of uh, good, good ideas for the day, and we are definitely seeing those pan out. So, um, yeah, uh, hope you guys have a great, this is definitely better than the last two days. <laughs> so, Hope you guys have a good rest of your trading day. You know, trade trade smart. Don't trade afraid. Quit looking at your account balance the whole time you're trading because that messes you up. And um, you know, let's let's have a let's have a good continued week. And um, we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye bye.